Welcome everybody uh, to our special service. It's Christmas morning and it's lovely to see you all wherever you may be in the world. Our first hymn that we're going to sing today is My Jesus, My Saviour. Please stand, open the windows of your house and the back doors and sing out. Today is a day of celebration. service then. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. We say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Hear the words of the angel to Joseph. You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Therefore, let us seek the forgiveness of God through Jesus, the Saviour of the world. So we say sorry to God by saying, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, 
love, mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we stand, if we're able to say, Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. So our colic for Christmas Day, Lord Jesus Christ, your birth at Bethlehem, draws us to kneel in wonder at heaven touching earth. Accept our heartfelt praise as we worship you, our Saviour and our eternal God. Amen. So uh, over now to Mike and Abby for our readings this morning. This passage from the book of the prophet Isaiah is one of hope and promise to the people who at the time were in exile in Babylon. A messenger will announce the beginning of God's work of salvation, which the whole world will see. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 52. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your sentinels lift up their voices. Together they sing for joy, for in plain sight they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the letter to the Hebrews. The coming of Jesus was the culmination of all that had gone before. He is the key part of God's plan. Jesus shared our humanity and died so that we might receive full salvation and enjoy a restored relationship with God. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets, but in these last days he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he has also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the Majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you? Or again, I will be his father and he will be my son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all God's angels worship him. Of the angels, he says, He makes his angels winds and his servants flames of fire. But of the Son, he says, Your throne, O God, is for ever and ever, and the righteous scepter is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. And, 
In the beginning, Lord, you founded the earth and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like clothing. Like a cloak, you will roll them up and like clothing they will be changed. But you are the same and your years will never end. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through him. And without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory is of the Father's only Son, full of grace, and truth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Over to Kerry for her sermon. Would you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Oh, thank you. I just noticed this on the altar here. Whoever left me that, thank you very much. Um, I wonder if you've got one of these under your tree, whether you've got it wrapped in nice shiny paper or whether, you know, you've had a little little feel over the days and weeks, maybe. I do this and then maybe, well, might as well open it now. So here goes, I'm a bit of a ripper, so let's have a go. Something really exciting, this. And, uh, oh, dust doesn't polish. Thank you to whoever whoever gave me that. I'll just put it over here. I wonder if you knew what you were going to receive this Christmas. If it was a surprise, if someone bought you a gift, or maybe you bought your own gift this year. And what if that gift didn't quite meet your expectations like mine? Christmas can be a bit of a mixed bag, can't it? with our excitement and hopes all pinned on those shiny, lumpy parcels under the tree. But once the wrapping's off, the truth is out. And our Gospel reading today speaks of light. Jesus being the light. And I'm going to take you to a time in the, in the Christmas story where light featured and people's expectations were met. So the first Christmas, the shepherds, as we read in the, in the Gospel story and the Christmas story, got a surprise that they would never forget. And it wasn't wrapped in silver glittery paper either. It went way beyond that. They received a visit from an angel and later a host of angels. So imagine the scene, it's pitch dark, it's cold, it's a tough job and these shepherds are tough men and they're trying to protect their crop, their flocks from predators who are looking out to steal the sheep. It's a lonely task and they huddle in their blankets in the pitch black. And suddenly we read, an angel of the Lord stood amongst them and the glory of the Lord shone about them. Imagine that, it went from pitch black to extreme light in one instant. And in that moment, nothing makes sense. Nothing was normal for those shepherds. They were confused and terrified all at once. 
And of course, nothing else was ever going to be normal for them again. They were about to meet the Saviour in the strangest of places, in the strangest of times. And our Gospel tells us the Word became flesh. And that encounter didn't meet their expectations because they simply didn't have any expectations that night. It was a normal night. And yet the light of, of the glory of God shone about them. The birth of a king and a saviour and a messiah were not taking place in Herod's palace. It wasn't a clergy only invite at the, at the temple, nor was it a VIP celebrity invitation only event. Jesus' birth was announced to dirty, smelly shepherds who were viewed by society with suspicion and derision. This is God's way. This is God's love, who welcomes all into relationship with him. Regardless of our standing in society, our reputation, our bank balance, or where we live, God calls you to see the Saviour wrapped in cloths and laid in a manger. No frills, no glitter. Jesus, the light of the world, began life in poverty and homelessness to a poor young couple. He invites you today into a relationship with him. So, if your Christmas present, once the shiny paper came off, did not meet your expectations, that's okay. Remember, you're offered a gift this morning that will not just meet your expectations. Instead, it will exceed your expectations because the Word became flesh and lived among us and we have seen his glory. We have the hope of new life in Jesus. It's yours to receive. God's outrageously extravagant gift of Jesus is on offer today. And it doesn't need shiny paper to disguise it. This gift is the shape of a baby in a manger with no frills, no glitter. This is the shape of a man on a cross, again with no frills and no glitter. This gift is the shape of the risen Jesus. This is the gift of the Son of God, the light of the world, who sits at the right hand of the Father in glory, and we await his return. This gift is pure love and is available to all who are willing to receive it. So today there is a gift on offer and it's yours to receive. So to those who receive him, he gives the power to become the children of God. Amen. Amen. And now we come to light our final Advent candle, Jesus, the light of the world. So let's pray. God our Father, today the Saviour is born, and those who live in darkness are seen a great light. Help us who greet the birth of Jesus with joy to live in the light of your Son and to share the good news of your love. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who is coming to the world. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Kerry. Let us declare our faith in God. Say after me. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Over now to Hilary for our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. 
Father God, creator of the universe, holy child of Bethlehem, we praise and thank you for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ into our world and into our lives. For the hope and joy offered through your great gift of yourself, we offer our gratitude for your great goodness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord Jesus, whose family found no room at the inn, we pray for the homeless. For families spending Christmas in temporary accommodation. For rough sleepers. For all agencies and charity workers who help the homeless, especially the Light Project here in Peterborough. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord Jesus, born in a stable, we pray for all who live in poverty. For those across the world who will go to bed hungry and cold tonight. For those who worry about paying their bills and feeding their families. For all agencies and charity workers who help the poor. Lord, Hear us, Lord, graciously hear us. Lord Jesus, born into a world which largely rejected you, we pray for all who feel excluded by society, for those who feel forgotten and alone, for the bereaved and those who mourn, for those who find Christmas a painful time, for all those our society renders invisible. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord Jesus, whose angels inspired the shepherds to seek you and adore you, help us to find you this Christmas time. May we allow your light to shine through the darkness that surrounds our broken world and illumine our lives so that we may know your true glory. We ask these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. So where you are at home, uh, if you're able to please stand for the peace. May the God of peace make you completely holy, ready for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of the peace. Peace be with you, wherever you are in this world. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as, as your children, children and welcomed, welcomed us to sit and, and eat with, with you. you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened, he opened his, his arms, arms of love upon, upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. 
After supper, at the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, Father we, we do, do this, this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. The body of Christ, broken for us all. Amen. Amen. The blood of Christ, shed for all of us. Amen. Amen. And our prayer after communion. We thank you, gracious Father, for welcoming your children to feast in your kingdom. By your love unite us, and with your Spirit send us. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you, scatter the darkness from before your path, and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. And now over to Sue for our notices. Good morning, everyone. A very happy Christmas to you all. What a special day. And I see you're all looking fabulous. I can see some lovely new jumpers and lots of sparkle. You're all looking fantastic. So I hope you have the most lovely, joyous day and a peaceful day too. And see you all next week. Thank you, Sue, for your notices. And just like to take this opportunity on behalf of Michael and myself to wish you all a very, very happy Christmas happy day. Christmas. Yes. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas, everybody. And let's celebrate by singing our final hymn, Joy to the World. <laughs>
Christmas, everybody, and we celebrate our Saviour's birth. So let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.